The history has been concealed from everyone for a long time. We will try to bear an unbiased attitude to it. The documents and the archives will help us to uncover the real truth. Armenia. Armenia is a small state situated in the south of the Caucasus Mountains. Emergence of this state gives rise to a number of questions. I have learned that 98% of the Armenian population consists of Armenians. It means that Armenia is a mono-ethnic country. It's a rare event. But haven't you asked yourself why Armenia is such a mono-ethnic country? No, I have not. But I have found the answer to this question. Maybe I'm mistaken. Does Tsardom Russia were sure that Armenians were loyal to the emperor? And, and therefore there was no need for the settlement of other nations in Armenia. So, so, because Armenians were the footholds for Russian army. Armenia being such a mono-ethnic state made such a popular Russian compare put questions. President Sarkisyan was right when he suggested that his answer was wrong. Does Armenian president thoughts about the emperor's decision, which was about the non-settlement of other nations in Armenia, was at variance with the history of this country? Historically, Armenia was located in a completely different region. But it's forbidden to speak and write about all this in official Armenian historiography. Therefore, we offer your attention an alternative scientific version of the development of historical events. For its polyethnic characteristics features, the territory of the Caucasus which present-day Armenia is also situated in is one of the most complex regions on Earth. It is the result of natural environmental processes. Because historical trade routes such as Great Silk Road had passed through this region, and now the presence in such a motley region of the mono-ethnic state of modern Armenia cannot be the result of natural processes. For instance, Iceland and Japan being such mono-ethnic countries are the result of natural environmental processes, because these regions have not been under the influence of complicated migration processes, and Armenia is being so mono-ethnic which is surrounded from all sides with multinational countries like Azerbaijan, Georgia, Turkey and Persia is not sensible. Because Armenia being so mono-ethnic is the result of planned genocide and ethnic cleansing policy continued for two centuries. Not only the Azerbaijani but also Russian people were expelled from Armenia. You have to know that in 1991 most of the Russians were expelled from Armenia. Today Armenia is the most mono-ethnic republic. There are a lot of Russians and people of other nations in everywhere except Armenia. In the meeting with the political elites, the director of one of the large-scale media holdings of Russia, Dmitry Kiselyov, has said, there is no any Russian school in Armenia and the Russian language has already disappeared there. It means that not only relations with Russia, but also Russian culture disappears. Council of Europe's experts also accused Armenian authorities of displaying discrimination against Russian people. These are the realities of the so-called Armenia's loyalty to Russia, which President Ser Sarkisyan spoke about. And this kind of historiography which is presented by mononational Armenia contradicts with the historiography of the surrounding countries, and indeed the whole world. Naturally, another story is being presented to the Armenian people, serving these processes in the Armenian way. We, creators of this film, are sure that the Armenian public has the right to know the truth. That is why we decided to create this film, in order to show the Armenian people an alternative history for which it has the right.
So what are the reasons for the mono-ethnicity of Armenia located in such an ethnically diverse region? To understand this, we will return to 200 years ago when Tsarist Russia conquered the Caucasus. The map of the Caucasus region in 1799. Soon there will occur the incidents which will completely change the history of the Caucasus region. Here is the work of art by the painter Franz Raubau, displayed the capture of Irovan Fortress on the 1st of October, 1827. Memories of Yevdokim Lachinov, who was a Decembrist and took part in the capture of Irovan Fortress. First, General Karsovsky approached the gates of castle and ordered to open them. Our auditor persuaded defenders in Tatar language and urged them to carry out an order without any hesitation. At that time, Russians called the Azerbaijani people the indigenous population lived in both the Caucasus and Irawan as Tatars. The magnificent Irovan fortress was built on the rocks on the bank of Zengi River. Irovan was called the city of minarets. There were nine mosques, over 800 houses, caravansarai squares and bazaars. Irovan Khanate was ruled by Hussein Gulukhan. Irovan assumed a strategic importance for Russians to carry out their interest in the Caucasus. Since 1804, during 23 years, Russian troops wasted their efforts to capture Irovan fortress. At last, during the reign of Emperor Nikolai I, a huge military expedition consisted of 12,000 soldiers and armed with strong long-range guns started attack again. In October 1827, after the tedious attack under the command of General General Paskevich, Russian troops meeting with a strong opposition, were able to break down resistance of courageous defenders and capture the castle. By the Peace Treaty of Turkmenchai signed in 1828, all northern Azerbaijani Khanates, including Irovan Khanate, were annexed to the Russian Empire. Armenian Catholics assured General Paskevich. After occupation of Irovan and Nakhchivan Khanates by our army, thousands of Armenians with all their wealth will come from Persia and Turkey, even India, to settle in these lands. Thus, at the beginning of the 19th century, the mass settlement of the Armenian people in the South Caucasus started. Even after the settlement of inhabitants, Russian General Ivan Vasilevich Paskevich noted, right now Tatars make up two-thirds of the population of this province. One hundred years later, there will be more than one million Armenian settlers in the South Caucasus, and it will radically change the ethnic structure of this region. Unlike neighboring countries, Armenia has no Azerbaijani population. Unlike the surrounding countries, Armenia doesn't have Azerbaijani architecture. Unlike neighboring countries, Armenia doesn't have Azerbaijani toponyms. And unlike neighboring countries, Armenia doesn't have Albanian churches and architecture. They are all Armenized and are called Armenian. Let's pay attention to the territory of present-day Armenia before and after the settlement of Armenians here. Before the mass settlement, there were hundreds of mosques and a number of Azerbaijani cultural and architectural monuments in present-day Armenia. After the settlement of Armenians, the process of destruction of these monuments began. As a result, there is almost no Azerbaijani Muslim architectural monuments in Armenia.
After the settlement of Armenians, immediately the process of the exterminating and oppression of the Azerbaijanis began. Therefore, unlike other neighboring countries, there is not any Azerbaijani in Armenia. Actually, before the settlement of Armenians, all the geographical names were in the Azerbaijani language. Before the settlement of Armenians, almost all place names were Azerbaijani. After the settlement of Armenians, the process of changing toponyms to Armenian began. As a result, there are only a few of the many thousands of Azerbaijani toponyms in Armenia today. Prior to the settlement of Armenians in Armenia, there were many Christian Albanian churches and monasteries, as well as other monuments of culture and architecture. After the settlement of Armenians, all of them were transferred to the Armenian church, which declared them part of their spiritual heritage. In parallel, everything that has not undergone a change has been destroyed. These are the historical territories of Azerbaijan, more than 2,000 Azerbaijani toponyms and hydronyms. And what happened to the territory of the Erevan Khanate after its settling by Armenians from Turkey, Iran and the Middle East? Lake Goche is now called Sevan. The river Zangi Hrazdan. The city of Erevan, Yerevan. From year to year, Azerbaijanis were forcibly expelled from their homeland. All this resulted in the complete destruction of the medieval Azerbaijani heritage. The mass extermination of the entire indigenous population in the territory where the Armenian Republic is now established. Erevan fortress, which was the pearl of Azerbaijani architectural art and put up a strong resistance to occupations for centuries, was destroyed. The memory was erased. The vestiges of Azerbaijan civilization were lost. The century-old history was written by pro-Armenian foreign scientists again. All of them were aimed to prove that only Armenian people lived in these territories, and only their culture and history existed. One of the falsified claims put forward by one of the propaganda films made by the Order of the Ministry of Culture of Armenia and Yerevan Municipality. There is no such a territorial unit termed as Azerbaijan in the north of the Aras River. Such a territorial unit has never been existed. This territory was named Iran in all sources, and we also call it Iran. Azerbaijan is situated in the south of the Aras River. The territory in the north of the Aras River was called Shirvan and Dagestan, not Azerbaijan. To all appearance, authors of Armenian movie present the ideas of our contemporaries, and they speak in ways that do not accept objections to their ideas. We also quoted three figures, but from three historical figures. They lived at that time which historians in Armenian movies speak about. Our 
In comparison with their heroes, our heroes did not talk about history. They created history. They were emperors of Russia. They exactly knew which countries they had occupied and which countries they had entered into an agreement with. Does whose soils did Russians annex? Archive materials will help us to explain these questions. They are a lot, so a few films are not enough to cover them. We have chosen some of them. In the early 18th century, the Russian autocrat Peter I, within the framework of his project for Russia's access to the Warm Seas, is making a Caspian expedition in order to seize the strategically important regions of the Caucasus. However, here he faced a serious opponent in the face of the Ottoman Turkey. In 1724, in Constantinople, a treaty was signed between the great empires, Russia and Turkey, on the partition of the Iranian possessions, namely Azerbaijan. In the agreement signed by Russian diplomat Nepuyev and Ottoman Wazir Ibrahim Pasha, it was told that Azerbaijani province and all its subordinated territories, the territories and cities under the Irawan province are handed over to the Ottoman Empire. We have brought the Russian version of the treaty to your notice. However, taking into consideration that this document was bilateral, we also visited Istanbul State Archives. For the first time, we were acquainted with the Ottoman version of the document. In the Turkish version, it's called the Treaty of Istanbul in 1724. This is the original of the treaty. It has been kept among the Ottoman documents of the Middle Ages and has not been shown to anybody yet. For the first time it has been introduced to our shooting team. It was the first peace treaty signed between Turkey and Russia in the history. On the 23rd of June 1724, French ambassador to Istanbul Marquez de Bonac, seeing that the war between Russia and Ottoman Empire was inevitable, mediated the signing of the Istanbul Agreement dividing the territory of Iran. In accordance with this agreement, mainly Azerbaijani territories were divided. In the South Caucasus, Irovan, Ganja, Garabag, Nakhchivan and other Azerbaijani lands, including South Azerbaijan, join Turkey. The Caspian littoral regions of Azerbaijan as well as Jilan and Mazandaran provinces were given to Russia. Geylan ve Mazenderan bölgesi de Hazar kıyılarıyla beraber Rusya'ya bırakılmıştı. Arşivli dâni ne ostavlayat sâmnini. Archival materials do remove all doubts. In the South Caucasus, Russia annexed the Azerbaijani lands, not mythical ancient Armenian lands. The Emperor Peter I and Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, Ahmed III, knew exactly what territory they had occupied and distributed according to the treaty in 1724. The Azerbaijan statehood was formed in these lands. Rulers of these Khanates used to order to mint coins. Khanates had their own territories, a language, army, administration system, and independent foreign policy. All these Khanates were subject to the United Azerbaijan Beyler Beylik. One of the capitals of these Khanates was Irovan. To prove that there has been only an ancient Armenia in these territories and only Armenians had lived there. The Armenian site purposefully doesn't mention Azerbaijan is situated on the north of the Aras River in the Caucasus. Let's look through the documents again. History will value itself. In Russia in 1727, during the reign of the Peter II, the agreement between Russia and the Ottoman empires was ratified. 
It is noted that the merging point of Aras River with the Kura River became intercourse of the Russian, Turkish and Persian lands. The Turkish border is determined by the whole territory between the Kura and the Aras Rivers, named all Azerbaijan. In this document, the territory of the Kuran Aras rivers is called Azerbaijan, inter alia Azerbaijan. Of course, Russian emperors and diplomats did not write the word of Azerbaijan as it is today. However, it's impossible to confuse this word with the word Armenia. The fragment from the decree of the Russian Emperor Pavel I in 1799. The territory is controlled by Ganja, Irvan, Khoi, Garabag, Tabriz and other separate Khanates in Azerbaijan province adjacent to the Ottoman port. The decree states that Azerbaijan is an independent political entity and includes Garabag, Ganja, Irvan and other Khanates. Does three Russian emperors Peter I, Peter II and Pavel I describe Azerbaijan unequivocally in the north of the Aras River in the Caucasus and speak about the independence of the Azerbaijani rulers? In 1786, the representative of Russia, Russian diplomat Stepan Burnashov, had been in Tbilisi, in the palace of Georgian Tsar Irakli II. Burnashov traveled all the region and wrote a number of works, including mentioning that Azerbaijani lands are located in the north of the Aras River in the Caucasus. In the chapter Distribution of Azerbaijan Lands, Burnashov describes Azerbaijani Khanates and cities. In the north, the current territory of the so-called Azerbaijan Lands is neighbored with Kakhetia and Kartlian kingdoms, that is to say with Georgia. Stepan Burnashov specially emphasizes the independence of some Azerbaijani Khanates. Azerbaijan rulers have to be divided into two parts as being dependent and independent. Адребижанских владельцев разделять должно на самовластных и зависимых. Then Burnashov lists the names of Azerbaijani Khanates situated in the north of the Aras River in consecutive order. Western states were concerned about Russian move into the Caucasus and gave much attention to the situation in the region and took notice. This is the English map of 1835. As you can see here, Azerbaijani territory also covers present-day Armenia. This is the American map published in Boston at the same time. Here Azerbaijani territory has been also depicted in the Caucasus. It is clear that at the beginning of the 19th century great powers such as Russia, Great Britain and the United States of America depicted Azerbaijani territories in the Caucasus, in the north of the Aras River. In 1864, the English consul in Tabriz, Keith Abad, on his memorandum addressed to the British Royal Geographical Society, provided them with the information about Azerbaijan. The Azerbaijan country has been divided between Russia and Persia. Russia has been appropriated 8,000 square miles of territory of Azerbaijan, which is the same with the territory of Great Britain. Kate Abbott described Azerbaijani territory subordinated to Russia. The Russian part on the north and northeast extends from the Caucasus Mountains to Baku and the surrounding regions on the Caspian Sea. On the south from the Aras River and the Mugan Plain to the Talish region and the Astara River to the Caspian Sea. In 
Karabakh. This region includes Muslim regions such as Irawan, Nakhchivan, Garabakh, Ganja, Shirwan, Shaki, Shamaki, Baku, Guban, Salian, and Talij. The British diplomats' memorandum indicates that Azerbaijani lands covered large areas on the Rada north of the Aras River in the Caucasus. Additionally, Russian, British and American maps show that actually Armenia doesn't belong geographically to the territories on the north of the Aras River, because historic Armenia has been situated in small Asia, not in the Caucasus. Only in the 20th century, after the mass settlement of the Armenians in the Caucasus and the establishment of the Armenian state here, the incorrect idea about these places being historic Armenian lands has been formed. Today, on the basis of the Armenians' claims on Karabakh, there are especially these statements by pro-Armenian figures about the existence of Azerbaijan on the banks of the Aras River, on the north of the Aras River. But preserved historical records, Russian diplomats' notes, geographical maps remove all doubts. The large Azerbaijani territories were bordered with Georgia. Today Armenia is a mono-ethnic country. For nearly 200 years in the country, smooth and well-aimed ethnic cleansing and deportations of other peoples were carried out. First of all, it started with Azerbaijanis. Surely there is no problem if there is no local population. Today, tens of thousands of Armenians live in Turkey. However, they claim that they have suffered genocide in this country. In Azerbaijan, which some of its lands have been occupied by Armenia, just 30,000 Armenians live in Baku. But in Armenia, which claims to be a tolerant country, neither a Turk nor an Azerbaijani live. And the present-day Armenian people are taught, in other words, pure Armenian ethnic history. In this regard, other foreign scientists are not allowed to investigate a question. Even though there is any scientist trying to investigate the truth, he will be called as people's enemy if he does not have Armenian root. The American scientist Robert Hewson, who comes originally from Armenia, notes, In year one they tried to impress and fill me with that we shouldn't make difficulties with the researchers in the West. Our greatest contribution to Armenia should be that we spread the facts investigated by the Armenian Academy of Sciences in other languages. Within the framework of information, support to Armenian society will suggest the alternative history to them. In the subsequent series of film, we will arrive at the truth on the main postulates being staged in the Armenian society. These postulates reflect the history of Armenia, as if it stands on the clay feed. The Armenian audience has to choose to content themselves with the official history presented to them or to pay attention to alternative information.